Sapkowski's The Witcher may have been a popular series of novels in Poland, but worldwide, it's the video game adaptations that are more widely known. The Witcher trilogy by CD Projekt Red serves as a sequel to the novels, following Geralt as he battles monsters both supernatural and human while dealing with the deteriorating political situation of the continent. What was a local bestseller has since become one of the most important RPG franchises of the millennium, thanks to its writing, world design, and gameplay. Today on Game Files, we're taking a look at Geralt of Rivia's journey from the page to the controller as we chronicle the history of The Witcher. The franchise's journey to video games began in 1996 with an attempt by now-defunct Polish developer Metropolis Software to make a 3D action-adventure game. It was cancelled the next year due to Metropolis biting off more than they can chew, but what footage there is shows a game that is very much of the era. The cancellation meant that the license was up for grabs, which little-known developer CD Projekt Red picked up from Sokovsky in 2002 for the low price of 9500 US dollars. In hindsight, we can call this a bad move, but think about it for a second. The Witcher was a moderately popular dark fantasy series that was best known in Poland. CD Projekt Red had not developed a single game at that point, having focused on localization for much of the company's history. There was no guarantee that the game would be successful, hence the dirt cheap price. Using a heavily modified Aurora engine from BioWare, The Witcher was released to strong sales and a warm reception in 2007. Praise was heavily directed at the game's setting and writing, which did not have the black and white morality common to other RPGs at the time. However, The Witcher's original release was marred by bugs and technical issues. One year later, an enhanced edition was released that fixed many of the problems of the original. And trust me, it's the version you should play. The modest success of The Witcher resulted in work beginning on a console version, which nearly caused CD Projekt Red to go bankrupt. Called The Witcher White Wolf, the port was helmed by French developer Widescreen Games. It swiftly entered developmental limbo, as Widescreen demanded more manpower and money to work, while CD Projekt Red delayed payments due to multiple missed deadlines. The game was eventually cancelled in 2009, and since this was at the height of the 2008 financial crisis, CD Projekt Red was in dire need of financial security. That would come in the form of The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. It featured a much improved graphical engine, full voice acting, 16 different possible endings, and a suite of gameplay improvements that made it much easier to get into. More importantly, it sold 1.7 million copies within a year, bringing CD Projekt Red back into the black. Its success meant that development could begin right away on The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. It would cost 81 million USD, involve 1,500 people working globally, and take three and a half years. During this time, it's important to remember that there was also another Witcher game in development. The Witcher Battle Arena was a MOBA for Android and iOS, similar in style to Dota or League of Legends, and featured characters from the franchise battling it out. It was as successful as you'd expect. It shut down at the end of 2015. As for The Witcher 3, hype would steadily build each time it was shown after it was announced in 2013. And come May 2015, The Witcher 3 became one of the greatest games of all time. This is not an exaggeration. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is the reason why The Witcher is as well known as it is. Don't get me wrong, The Witcher is a good series and The Witcher 2 in particular is a fantastic game in its own right. But The Witcher 3 is far more expansive in nearly every way. The stellar writing and storylines of previous games are expanded here, with complex tales such as the Bloody Baron leading the way. The combat is actually decent for once and not overly complex in design. There is so much to do, so much to see, and it's almost always of high quality. The Witcher 3 also has Gwent, the greatest card game this side of Triple Triad. It was so successful, in fact, that it would get its own spin-off. 
The Witcher 3 would prove to be a finale to both Geralt's saga and that of CD Projekt Red's first act. The company that had made its name off Sokovsky's books would look to the future in its next game, Cyberpunk 2077. It is one of the most anticipated games of 2020, thanks in no small part to the pedigree CD Projekt Red has earned through The Witcher. What's next for the Monster Slayer? CD Projekt Red hasn't ruled out returning to Geralt in the future, but for now, the video game franchise is dormant. Sure, you can watch Henry Cavill gallivant around in a wig on Netflix, but he will never be the definitive Witcher. Because ultimately, The Witcher will be best known as one of the video game industry's greatest RPG franchises. What, what are you doing? Killing monsters.